Well, good morning, and welcome once again to the Morning Meditation with God radio ministry brought to you each morning at this same time by the generous and loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky, and we'd like to extend to you and to your entire family a warm and loving invitation to come and be with us in any and all of the services of the Midwest Church of Christ. Again, located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30 we have our Sunday Bible School, and at 10.30 we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study, prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible, in the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do this. One is the home Bible study, where some where you can study the Word of God right in the comforts of your own home with the Bible correspondence course. Secondly, that someone will personally come and study the Bible with you, study it uh, where you can uh, get an understanding of the Word of God, as to what God would have you to do in this generation. I want to give thanks to those that are getting up early on every morning to uh, study the Word of God. We want to just say thank you for so much for honoring God for the study of His Word. The other announcements, the Ladies' enrichment classes will start this uh, Sunday and will meet on the second and fourth Sunday of each month. At the, second, at the end of the second service, it'll be uh, following the second service. Um, uh, that's the second week, that is. The fourth Sunday, we'll meet, the class will meet at... Um, 9.30, uh, so we, we are looking forward to you, uh, all of the sisters, being engaged. This Sunday, it will be uh, following the second Sunday on the 14th. So, God bless you, and please make sure all sisters are there to participate. Vision Day, Saturday, um, February the 20th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., there is the Youth Vis Vision Day, and there will be guided discussions on making choices for our future. Special guest speakers will be there. I, I understand that Brother Macon is going to be there to talk about Southwestern Christian College. So we, we want you to want you to make sure that your middle and high schoolers are here. We also have other members who can talk about their vocation. All children are not uh, college bound. It's just as well to get a um, two year uh, plumbing degree. Uh, our vocation. Uh, where you can get into the workplace with a skill set. So we want you to get, get your children engaged on Saturday, February the 20th. Uh, the Black History Program is set for Saturday, uh, February the uh, 27th. And we hope that you will um, uh, tune in. It'll be virtual this year. And we're looking forward to you um, 
being being with us um, on our Black History program starting at 6.30 p.m. Also, the Minister's Appreciation is on Sunday the 28th um, in recognition of 36 of years of service. I thank this congregation uh, for your love and you demonstrating it in a mighty way. And I thank you so, so very, very much. Also, um, back on the 27th, Saturday the 27th, the Victory Bible uh, College is going to, with Pastor Derek Wilson, is going to be presenting uh, to me uh, the, the honor of a honorary doctorate's degree. And um, I thank God for that. Um, uh, don't feel that I'm worthy, but I, I do appreciate the kindness and uh, the, the goodness. And when people do something good, you ought to at least say thank you. And I want to say thank you to uh, uh, Pastor uh, Derek Wilson uh, and uh, uh, the, all of the uh, members of KPAC. We thank you for that. Thank you so much. Praise be unto God. Now, um, we are, want to remember our sick and shut in. Want to remember Sister Jacqueline Hallman, Sister Clarice Floyd Johnson, Sister Emma Johnson, Sister Eliza Jordan, and Sister Don Marie Sizemore, Brother Robert Jordan, and Brother Angelo Pentegrast. Pray also for our shut ins uh, Sister Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, Sister uh, Savannah Johnson, Sister Opal Pace, Sister Pearl Smith, and Sister uh, Mary Wood. Uh, please pray also for Brother James Frazier. Pray for those going through dialysis, radiation, chemotherapy, and other specialized treatments to the hands and eyes and other special treatments. Keep them in your, in your prayer. Keep though all of those who asked for special prayer this past Sunday. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to being in fellowship with you all this Sunday. Uh, and may God be with us all. Praise be unto God. Now, I also want to give thanks to those <clears throat> who supported the radio ministry this week. I want to say thank you to Sister Linda Bird, Brother Alvesta Curry, Brother Richard Curry, Brother Tony and Sister Chiquita Curry, and Sister Terry Curry, uh, Brother Wesley Keys, uh, Sister Marceline Marshall, Sister Ethel Rivers, Sister Angelica Robertson, Sister Onda Sharp, Brother Kevin Stevenson, Sister Joey Stevenson, Sister Marilyn Wester, and our beloved friends, Brother David and Sister Rita Kramishi. What a thank you. And I want to urge all of you that uh, take a blessing to this ministry and our technology commission. You, you serve, uh, you, you honor us with your contributions uh, to, to God and this ministry. And we pray that God will bless you richly. All right, let me uh, be right back just a moment.
All right. Praise be unto God. <laughs> uh, I, I, amen. I had to get these peepers on because <clears throat> the letters were <clears throat> were coming up um, uh, very small. And uh, we know God would have us to be able to uh, read the letters. Praise be unto God. So, those of you that are giving to this ministry, we say thank you so much. And I urge others, please consider giving towards the uh, radio and technology um, ministries here at Midwest. May God be with you. Now, now let's open your Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible says, <clears throat> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it is in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth uh, the way of the righteous, uh, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live uh, in this new kingdom of God. Uh, Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 3, the Bible, the word of God says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are, amen, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall see God. Oh, I done tore that all to pieces. Y'all just, amen. Just say amen if you can. Now let's turn your Bibles to the 13th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. The 13th chapter. Uh, the book of First Corinthians and the chapter is seven and the verse is seven. First Corinthians thirteen verse seven. Now the Bible says love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endure all things. Friday, February the 12th, 2021, our daily devotion entitled, Love Assumes the Best. Someone said, love has no limits. Love never says, you've gone too far. I can't love you now. All things 
means everything is included in all things. Christ-like love leaves no doubt in the mind of another that you will continue to love steadfastly. Do those close to you know that they can fail and do foolish things, yet you will not falter in your love for them? Are others assured that when, even when they hurt you, you still love them, holding nothing against them? For you see, love assumes the best about others. If someone inadvertently offends you, you choose to believe the offense was unintentional. If someone seeks to harm you, you bear all things, forgiving unconditionally. If a positive light can be shed on a difficult encounter, you grasp it if someone continually provokes you. You endure all things. You never lose hope in the ones you love. You practice the same unconditional love toward others that Christ our Lord gives to you. The Apostle Paul said that he was nothing if he had the faith to move mountains, the tongue of an angel, and the gift of prophecy to understand all mysteries. And yet did not have God's love. It is unacceptable to say, well, I just can't love people that way. When God loves people through you, this is the only kind of love he has. Study. Study 1 Corinthians 13, with gratitude that God has already expressed his complete and selfless love to you. Here's what we must do. Pray and ask God to express it through you right now to others in your life. And so is the readings from the books of the Lord. The book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 3 through 12. And here in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and the verse is 7. Now let's turn your Bibles back to our featured study. Found in the book of 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter. And we'll begin reading this morning at verse number 8. Hardship, misfortunes, trials, temptations. Do I have a witness? We all come face to face with difficult situations as we walk throughout life. Sometimes 
difficult circumstances seem overwhelming and impossible for us to handle as though they will swamp us. Amen. And down trodden us under the weight of pressure, tension, distress, and yes, discouragement. Can 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 somebody can somebody understand what what happens to our lives sometimes? The question is, what can be done? The answer seems beyond our reach sometimes. There seems to be no solution to the hardship and misfortune and, and, and temptations that we face day in and day out. But, but can, I, can I tell you anyway? There is a solution. There is a solution. And, this, and that solution is the Lord Jesus himself. Jesus is the hope that all of us have if we will generally seek after the Lord genuinely trust and call upon his name. He promises to give us courage to face the difficult circumstances and conquer them. He provides a bold, fearless courage. And this promise comes to us only through Jesus. For this the Apostle Paul declared, God has not given us a spirit of fear. If you are fearful this morning, it didn't come from it didn't come from the Lord. If you are scared, it didn't, it didn't come from the Lord. Because the apostle said, the Lord has given us the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. A bold, fearless courage that the hope of God gives to each one of us. For 40 years, King David had been a courageous soldier, first serving as the commander within the armed forces and then as commander-in-chief. When he became king of Israel during the years of service and reign, Israel reached to a height of glory the nation had never before achieved. Also David's leadership. The territory of Israel would be included more land than ever before or any time since, including the present history that you and I see every day In this generation, both the glory and the territory has reached brilliance under the brilliant leadership of King David. But note, but note this one truth. David did not achieve this unparalleled success by himself serving under his leadership were the elite forces and most honorable 
commanders who have ever served a nation. Brothers and sisters, let me, let me, let me, give me, let me, let me have you turn your Bibles to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 8, chapter 23, and, and we'll begin at verse number 8. Now let's, let's, let's see here. The Bible says these are the names of the mighty men whom David, uh, amen, whom David had. Josabeth, the Tecumnite, chief of the three heroes, known also as Adonai, the Ezanite. He wielded his spear and went against 800 men who were slain at one time. Somebody say amen. What a man. What a man. What a, what a mighty big man. Next to him, among the three, uh, me, uh, the three mighty men, well, Eazah, son of Dudal, son of Adahai, he was with David when he defiled the Philistines, assembled there, for battle, and the men of Israel had departed. Eleazar arose and struck down the Philistines until his hand was weary and clung to the sword. Mm -mm -mm. The Lord wrought a great deliverance and victory that day. The men returned after him, a man only to take the spoil. Next to Elzar, Elzar, Elzar was Shemna, son of, uh, of Alji, the Hazarnite. And the Philistines were gathered in, in Lehi on a piece of ground full of lentils. And the Israelites fled from the Philistines, but he, yes, sir, stood in the mist in the midst of the ground and defeated it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a, a great victory. My brothers and sisters, what do we see? We see three elite soldiers, commanders, that was with King David. May I take a moment, may I take a moment and ask you permission to talk to the preachers and elders of the house of God. Can I take a moment? Will you grant me that? Will you, will you grant me that time? Because I want everyone, I want the preacher to know. And I want the elders to know. You got a big job to do. Shepherding, training and developing the people of God. And you can't do it by yourself. I come to tell y'all, I want you to hear me now. Now let me hear me. I want to say it again. Preacher, you can't do this by yourself. Elders, you can't do this by yourself. You've got to go and let God put before you men who will be able to assist you in the, the work of the church, in the ministry of the brotherhood. God wants you to know you can't do this by yourself. And the good news is this. God will put, God will put before you 
the very people that you need. The very people that you need in order for you to do the job that you need to make. My brothers and sisters, um, when God, when God, amen, I, my battery is getting ready to go. I got to get my, my power source back up. All right, I apologize for that. I'm not sure why my uh, system isn't charged all the way. All right. Okay. Now, we ought to be all right. When God had Moses to... Build the tabernacle. God, Moses said to God, I'm just a man. I'm just me. How am I going to get this people to, to do this great work? God told Moses, I've already, I've already touched the heart of the men who are able to build the tabernacle. I've got the seamstress. I've got the hammer. Those with a hammer. Those with the screws and all of the, whatever the tabernacle needed. God has already supplied the men and he told them who. Who to use. My brothers and sisters, that is the same truth. Ministers, preachers, elders, God has already placed men who can help you and work with you. Pointed holy women, holy women, who knows how to honor and keep the honor of God intact who knows not to worship the authority of the men in the house of God. I know y'all don't like that, but it is the truth anyway. God has put in place those who can support you. There, there have been things in my life I could never have. A, I know the history is going to say uh, under Brother Stevenson's leadership, these things happened. This happened. We built the Family Life Center. We've done great things. And, but I want you to know, I am not crazy. God put men in front of us who was able to do what God needed to have done. He put me in under the leadership of two, three great men. J. Frank McGill and uh, Lindsey Fitzpatrick and, and uh, uh, C.H. Williams. I, I come to tell you, I was learned humble men. Men of integrity. They brought other men like Brother Joe Stevenson. He's a, he's a shepherd of shepherds. 
He feeds the flock of God. Looks after them. Brother Bob Jordan. Good men. <laughs> Brother Richard Curry. <laughs> Amen. Do you think I could do all of this without God men like this? Holy women. Like Sister uh, Amen. Uh, uh, Mary uh, uh, um, McGill and, and Sister uh, uh, Fitzpatrick, Cora Fitzpatrick and Sister uh, Geraldine Williams and uh, these are these were holy women of God. And God puts these, he puts folk around us and he knows, he knows, listen to me now, he knows that uh, the leadership of this church is getting older. We can't, we can't run like we used to run. Oh, and it hurts my heart that I can't get out there with the people of God the way I want to and the way I used to. I can't, it hurts to the heart. It, 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 it hurts my heart that I can't do it. But God knew. That's why he put it into my heart to talk to the leaders of this church. And to this congregation, we got to bring young John Poo here, and we got to do what we've got to do in order to get that young man to be here. Young, young. Now we didn't know what was going to be coming up on us. We didn't know the pandemic was going to hit us. Didn't know. <laughs> oh, but God knew what we would be going through. That even when I was down, that we had Brother Kenneth Burns. <laughs> A seasoned gospel preacher. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. He brought along Brother uh, Minister Wayne Shimwell for us to train and develop is into the ministry of the Church of Christ. <laughs> he and John Poole has allowed us to go off and do great things. You're here right now watching because of what, uh, what our technology has been able to do. Thank God for that. We've got good God women. My wife, a God woman who does good to people, does kindness. Every baby that has been born in that church, when she was uh, a man, uh, she has made a blanket for them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I come to tell you, Sister Janice Stevenson and Sister Eliza Jordan, you know, you know, we've got... We've got we've got other women, Sister Rose Coleman, working with uh, all, with, with all of the sisters and and bringing the church. Uh, let me tell y'all something. Preachers, are are you listening? They gave me permission to talk to the preachers and to the elders this morning to let you know you can't do this by yourself. David understood this. There was three commanders in chief. <laughs> that God put in with David. For David needed to have these men who would go up against, who would go up against the mighty, the mighty armies of that day. I want you to know, God, God knows you can't do this thing by yourself. God has put men around you. And even as we minister into our community, looking after not only our children, but we're looking at the children of our community. And, and, and you know what God has done. He has put the right kind of people Oh, my, 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 my.
two two people I I call them uh, our volunteer coordinators with a big salary of volunteering. <laughs> uh, Sister Rita and Brother David Kramishi, what could we do without you? Uh, our learning center has reached great heights. There are there are anonymous donors that that give. They know we don't have to be out here helping up. We could just limit our our help to those that are in Midwest. But no, 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 no. Midwest has never been that kind of a congregation. From the time I come, we reached uh, this church. Uh, J. Frank and the elders were, were reaching out to our community, touching the hearts and minds of children of every generation. Yes, I see Brother Clark Stannard <laughs> has joined us this morning. My prayer goes to him and his uh, family. May our God be with them. But I come to tell all of you, come to tell all of you, um, we, we need to be thankful for what God is doing and elders and preachers Know that you can't do this by yourself. And I thank God for all of you in Midwest. You know we can't do it by ourselves. And uh, we thank God that you sent us five good men to serve as deacons in the 21st century. Because the church has to be served. There's ever, if there's ever a time, the church has to be served, ministered to, bring healing from the hurt. You're right, Sister Amanda. We thank God for good men, good women, and families here in Midwest. Oh, I know there's some that don't think we ought to be doing all of this. We, 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 we ought to just be de dealing with our own. No, no, no. But, but see, they, they don't know the kingdom. They, they don't understand the kingdom, the, the kingdom work. They don't understand that. And as I've told you before, I'll tell you again, and I'll tell you a thousand times. I'm a kingdom man. And I'm about kingdom business. I'm not confused what my what my what what my priorities are. And we'll talk about that this Sunday. You gotta know. You gotta know the kingdom. This is kingdom business. Yes, these men were with David, and they helped David. <laughs> win the battles that he was up against. What a lesson for us to stand fast in the Lord, to never desert or flee when the attacks uh, of the enemy becomes fierce. My brothers and sisters, <laughs> no matter what confronts us in life, a spirit of perseverance and steadfastness will give us the power, the love, and the sound mind to overcome all misfortunes. Disease can't stop us. Accidents can't hold us. Discouragement, depression, loneliness, Financial difficulty. None of these will overtake us. Why? Because we trust God. We trust God. God has a plan. 
And in his infinite time, he sets forth when we must prepare the church for the next 100 years to be the kingdom builders, disciple makers of the Lord Jesus. And that's why the Midwest Church of Christ, we will have a Christian school because God has put that there. This ain't, this ain't my agenda. This is God's agenda. And this is kingdom business. And woe to anybody that gets in the way of kingdom business. Don't, don't do that. Don't you find yourself like, uh, amen, many fighting against God. And so I thank you. And so church leaders, elders, preachers, you know one thing, you can't do this by yourself. If we are unwavering and determined what God has assigned us to do, then he'll do it. And he'll do it in his own time in his own way. God bless you. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. God is able. We're going to open up the prayer lines now. Jesus said in Matthew 10, And ye shall be hated of all men for my sake, for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. It's not, it's not easy. Everybody wants everybody to love them and like them. And, and, and I, I'm no different from any, anybody else. I'm no different. The elders are not any different. But there's one thing that we must do. We must always stay with the Lord. Sister, we're going to open up the prayer lines. If you need prayer, you call. Sister Marlene, Marlene, Marlena Walker says, please pray for my sister in Christ who is taking her exam today for her independent, independent license. Amen. Praise God. May God be with her. Amen. Amen. Yes. Paul went through a lot of trouble. In fact, God told him he was going he was going to suffer many things for his sake. Sister Marilyn Wester has asked us, please continue to pray for me and my family, and continue to pray for the Smith family, Phaedra and Tashambi Smith, and and pray for little Ezekiel. Pray for the child. He is preaching right now. Right now, he still. Speaking and have not uttered a word, but he is speaking. His life is speaking to us. Sister Anda Sharp says, please pray for my entire family. Amen, sister. We got them. We got them. The Apostle Paul knew what it was like to go through some hard times. Sister Linda Bird said, continue to pray for me and my family. Paul, even when he was being beaten with 39 uh, stripes, and uh, minus, the, minus the one to keep from 40, showed mercy. But he said, he says, but none of these things move me, neither count my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the, the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Can you be like Paul? Can you say, none of these things move me? 
None of them. Talk about me if you want to. Kick me if you want to. Lie on me if you want to. But none of these things, because I'm committed to what God has done, gave for me to do. Praise be unto God. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. How's Brother Kevin this morning? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Man. I'd also like to ask special prayer for my dad and my daughter and my grandson. And, and I want to thank everyone that prays for my family. Amen. And I want them to know that I got a good report on yesterday. My grandson made the other rope for the very first time. Amen. Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> Stick that chest out there. Yes. Amen. I'm happy, I'm happy about it. <laughs> Amen. I just want to say thank you. Good morning, everyone in Radio Land and on Facebook. Have a safe day and a safe weekend. Thank hey. you so very much. Hey, Amen. God, God bless you. Sugar. God bless you. Praise be unto God. 571-1240. 571-1240. If you'd like to request prayer, uh, the Apostle Paul says, and be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Sister Linda Bird said, at, le at one point in my life, I felt I was, the, I was in the gutter of life. Oh, but God said, not, not so, my child. Oh, Lord, testify. Testify. Oh, everybody can. Most of us can. Most of us can be with you, sister. Most of us can just be there. As the as the sweet psalmist of Israel said one time, I think in the 40th division. <laughs> I was I was in a horrible pit, and he lifted me up out of the horrible pit and set my feet on the rock and then he put a new song in my mouth <laughs> sing your song sister I'm still here I'm still here that's that's what we gotta do and let God be God cause he is anyway so you might as well give up and let him have his way bow with me father have mercy upon us. Thank you for those that got up this morning and listened to the morning meditation with God. Those, oh God, I pray that you would uh, lift us up. Allow your word to come into our hearts. Be with Sister Bird and be with Sister Wester. Be with Sister Amanda. Uh, Lord, oh Lord, be with Sister Anga. I know, God, that you are able. I pray for all of those you have set in the church, those that you have called upon to minister. We pray for our deacons, brother. Uh, Richard Curry and Brother Tony Curry, Brother Tony Burton, Brother uh, uh, Dwayne McGill. Uh, pray for these men. Ask God to be with them. And Brother Gary Simonton, be with them, oh God. Help them to minister to your people. Lord, thank you. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Sister Rita uh, and Brother David wants us to continue to pray for Rocky and John's complete healing from COVID-19. God bless you all, sister. May our God be with you. Until to, till Monday, I was almost ready to say tomorrow, but till Monday at this same time, know this. Our God loves you, and so do we.